Hi, this is just going to be a quick video. I thought I would show off something I made. We do a lot of vintage door chime repairs. And if you've watched any of my vintage door chime repair videos, you'll see at the end of them, I always hang the chime and hook it up to test it to make sure it works properly. There's lots of different chimes and there are different shapes and different sizes and hooking them up and testing them. And especially with the long tube chimes, having them hang level and all that is important. It's kind of time consuming the way I have been doing it. So I decided that it would be better to make a dedicated test jig that we can use on all the different styles of new tone chimes, both long tube and short tube chimes that they've made. And that makes it more efficient. Having good efficient setups and good efficient test jigs at the shop is important because that allows the work to get done more quickly and it's more consistent so it's easier to judge from unit to unit how well the repairs turn out. What I decided to do was to build something because there isn't anything readily available like this that you can just buy and since I was going to build something I figured I would make it kind of fancy. What I decided to build was a test, a permanent test jig for new tone long and short tube chimes. So I went down and I bought some mahogany because I figured if I was going to build it, the cost of materials is small no matter what kind of wood you buy. And I thought for whatever reason that mahogany was a better fit and was more suitable for new tone chimes than oak or poplar or birch or something like that. I just like the grain of the mahogany. Also mahogany, since it's a hardwood, it has a stronger grain to it and it accepts screws and things better and more consistently, I think, than some other kind of wood. Oak's kind of hard. Anyway, that was just my preference. And I, I didn't want to, I wanted to have something that was nicely made. That was part of the idea. If I was going to spend the time to build this, I wanted to build it so it would, the end result would be nice. So that's what I did. So I got some mahogany and I glued up some boards and made a blank for the top and then uh, routed for the frame assembly here. I routed, just did a, an easy round over with a little notch in it to give it a little bit of class, I guess, and uh, glued it all up and nailed it together. Once it was all done, I drilled out for, we have three push buttons. So it would be front door, rear door, side door, and everything is wired up on the inside. And then here on the edge, we have an input jack. This is where our transformer connection will go. That way I don't have cords hanging out of it all the time. It's a nice sort of self-contained unit. It's kind of heavy, which I like. This jack on the side, is sort of a universal jack. This is a Pomona jack and Pomona is a brand. It fits all of the Pomona plugs that we use here at the shop and we have a lot of purpose-made cables for different types of things and we've sta I standardized a long time ago on the Pomona stuff because it's good quality, it's readily available. We keep a lot of this stuff here at the shop so when we need to make up a cable for a specific purpose it's easy to do and they're all interchangeable. So I can use this, this fits here, you can plug it in here and then the other end would be connected to the transformer to power the chime. This is the same that we use over here on the workbench when we plug into our permanently mounted door station or door speaker station. So it's nice to have everything be universal because it makes it quick and easy and you can just grab a cable off the rack and use whatever you want to use it for. So it's just sensible to standardize that way. The other thing which makes this work better than what we've had before are these little brass inserts that are in the wood right now. I've got two setups and what these are for, these are threaded inserts. You drill a hole and they thread into the wood and then they're threaded on the inside also and they accept standard machine screws so you can just put the machine screw into them and when it comes time to hang a chime base on here, you just choose whichever set of holes match up with the chime that you're working on and boom, it's installed. So it's really very simple. And then there are some larger holes here also where the wires can come through. And for instance, these two inserts, these wide ones here at the top, these are for K-model chimes. These two here are for short tube bar chimes 
and I'll be adding more of these as I work on different models of chimes. All new tone chimes have some place on the chime where there's an opening through the chime, like here, where the wires would come through, that the wires that stick out of a wall normally in someone's home. And so I drilled these holes and they correspond with the opening for the wires for each different one. So there'll be more holes as time goes on. And then these are the wires that will provide power to the chime base and come from the three push buttons. So everything is wired up internally. It's all here underneath the cover and it's all wired up down in here. And then I've left enough slack on these where you can easily move them from one set of holes to another. So that's easy. And to make hanging this on the wall, because we have to hang it up to try the chimes, I did this sort of bevel bracket here, which matches its corresponding half is screwed up on the wall now. And I'll show you, all you have to do is hook it up and it hangs on the wall. So that makes it really easy. It's kind of a nice setup after I got it all built and drilled the holes and all like that. I put three coats of polyurethane over the top of it. I didn't put any stain or anything. I just let the natural color of the mahogany show through because I think it looks pretty nice. Let's go ahead and put a chime base on it and I'll show you how it works. So all you have to do, we're gonna use this. This is a model LC38 from 1976. This was a chime that someone sent to me. It was in one of my mail call videos a week or two weeks ago or something like that. All you have to do is take the wires that come through the hole and fish them through the hole in the chime base like this and pull them through and then you can set the chime base down on the jig and start the machine screws like that and like this and then we'll snug them up And this just makes it so much easier. The reason I decided to go with the bra threaded brass inserts is if you're putting chimes on and off this three or four times a week, if you don't have some kind of threaded insert and you're just screwing wood screws into the wood, in just a few weeks or maybe a few months, it's going to tear out the holes and things are going to become loose and they won't stay on tightly and that's all bad. So if you're going to make a test jig, make a good test jig so it, you know, holds up for a long, long time. I would expect this to last, you know, 20 years before anything has to be replaced on it if you take good care of it. So that's really the idea. Now all we have to do now that the chime base is installed, all we have to do is hook up our wires. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is always a little hard to see on a three note bar chime or a four note bar chime, but the screws are down the center and it's kind of hidden between the two bars. So it's a little hard to see, but I think you can see them down here pretty well. And they're labeled. So the first one is front. There is a screw missing here. This is the external front. That's to trigger a second chime, which we don't have in this setup. So the first thing we have to do is the front is, I have the wires color coded. So the wire for the front is got a yellow piece of heat shrink tubing on it. And we'll put that under the screw and tighten it down like that. And the next one is common and common is red. And having the legend of which wire goes where, it's important to write it down. The next one is trans. Trans is black. Trans is short for transformer. So that goes under that screw. And then we have side. Side is clear, which is this one. You can see the red wire through it, I think. Red wire through it but it's got a clear piece of heat shrink tubing on it. So that's for side. And then the last one rear is the blue, the black wire with the blue piece of heat shrink tubing on it. And now it's all hooked up. It doesn't matter that we've got a bunch of extra wire over here. We can always stuff it back in the hole if we wanted to, but it's certainly out of the way enough. If we even wanted to put the cover on it, I could. The nice thing about a setup like this is, since all of 
the buttons and the power, everything is wired behind the cover on the back. You only really have one wire under each screw. If this were in a house, you would have four wires under the common screw or you'd have to put a pigtail wire and wire nut them together. And it's kind of messy to do that that way. This way it's one wire under every screw. Now it's all hooked up and it's all set to hang up on the wall. Okay, so hanging it up on the wall is this easy. So here's our test jig with our LC38 connected to it. It's all wired up and ready to go. All we have to do is use the beveled br bracket here and it fits over this here. They're mating angles. So all you have to do is put it up on the wall and go like that and it's ready to go. It should be level because the bracket is level and that's pretty close. Level is not that important on a short tube bar chime, but when you're doing a long tube chime, it should be level. It should be level side to side. It also should be not, it should not be pitched out because then the tubes either hang in towards the plungers or out towards the, out away from the plungers, and that's not right. That's why I made this as big as it is, so the base fully sits on the wood and it's not tilted one way or the other because I like things to be, all things to be equal, I keep a little level, and all you have to do is loosen one of the machine screws, check the level with the level, little torpedo level here, and now the base is level also. So that's all ready to go. We're gonna take our Universal Shop Pomona input plug, and we're gonna plug it into the jack right here, and yes, it is color coded. You've got red and black and the wires are red and black because sometimes you're powering something that's DC and you need to have positive and negative. But in this case, chimes are AC, so it doesn't really matter. But good practice is red goes in the red plug. So you plug that in like that. We'll turn our power supply on and the lights should light up just like that. So once you've got it at that point, all you've got to do is try the chime. Front. And then rear. The single note. And then side, which is a different single note. And one of the things that you can watch, which is interesting, is if this were installed in your house and you had front, rear, and side buttons, you know, they would be spread around on different parts of your house. As you operated the chime, when you push the front button, the lights all go out, but you don't ever really get to see the other two buttons and what's going on with those as the chime rings. So if you watch, you'll notice the lights go out, but then they come back on. They all don't all come back on at one time. They come back on so, somewhat in an odd order. Like that. So that's because the Telecron motor here on the chime, when, when it's running, it's turning the three-armed armature that's beneath the base of the motor and it's picking up and making connections and picking up power as it goes and part of the design is when it's when it's running through its front door eight note cycle the rear door and the side door are won't operate because the chime is in operation and as it comes to the end of its rotation it switches things on and off and I think this one blinked off and then blinked on and off again and then this one and then they came on and it's some unusual order. That could be just inherent in the design of the chime. It could also be that you know this chime is 40 years old and it hasn't been serviced or anything so if I took the Telecron motor assembly off and cleaned the circuit traces and the, and the armature contacts it may be slightly different. It could have a lot of car carbon buildup on it but that's for another video. So this is my new Newtone long tube and short tube chime testing jig. 
and I think it was a very successful project and if you send me in a new tone chime to be serviced your chime will get installed on this jig when I'm all done servicing it and uh, it'll be tested and put through its paces to make sure it works properly. How can you not like that? I hope you found this a little bit interesting. I get to brag about something that I built, which I think is a good idea. So if you did like it, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, if you like our videos and you learn things from them, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. And if you would do that, we appreciate it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.